So if you happen to fall into the category of being what we call a person of low means or partially supported or partially funded, um, what that means from a uh, accommodation perspective in residential aged care is that you're not going to pay the advertised price for the room. Now, in order to qualify as being a person who is partially supported by the government or fully supported by the government in terms of accommodation costs, there are certain asset and income thresholds. So if you fall under certain levels of assets and income, the government may pick up all of your accommodation cost, or they may pick up a portion. So in other words, you will not be asked to pay the advertised price for the room. You won't pay a RAD so to speak, a refundable accommodation deposit. What you will be asked to do is pay a daily accommodation contribution, a DAC. That DAC can be recalculated into a lump sum, but what you will realize is that if you are in the category of paying a daily accommodation contribution, it is unlikely that you have the total lump sum to be able to pay a full rack. So it operates slightly differently to the scenario where there is a RAD in play, in other words you're paying the advertised price for the room. It is a little bit more complicated to understand, but fundamentally it is vital if you are in the category of being under certain income and asset thresholds that you submit the Centrelink paperwork in order to get this assessment back from them so that the nursing home knows to charge a DAC or a RAC rather than the advertised price for the room. We'll explain more about that obviously in our statement of advice presentation, but if you have any questions in the interim, please feel free to get back to us. Mm -hmm.